rules for community. And it really comes down to three rules. And th these are three rules that I live by you know, when I'm engaging online. Rule number one, be real. Uh, for the most part, what I'm saying is don't be a bot. <laughs> and, and by robot, you know, I mean, or by bot, I mean robot. I, I mean, you, if I want to talk to a robot, I'll call a financial services company. <laughs> or I'll call an automated phone system. You know, the kind where you get the, hello? Yes. Hello, please spell the first name of the account holder. K E V I N. I heard A D E F N. Is that correct? No. Thank you. Could you please spell the last name? <laughs> the bottom line is social media is about the social aspects. People are coming to interact with people. They don't, oops, sorry, they don't want to talk to machines. So, don't be a bot. For those of you fluent in Japanese, here's an example of, of someone I would say that is coming across more as a bot than as a person. It's wonderful if you want to share what other people are doing, but if you spend all of your time churning other people's information and just spitting it right back out, you're not really adding value to the process and you're not identifying yourself as a person. And the bottom line is, your customers are people. And as people, they want to speak with people. The world's already full of bots. You know, you got your, your get-rich-quick schemes. You've got, hey, I just added you to my mafia family. You know, you've got the social media games. You've got, you know, the multi-level marketing. And you've got, you know, the folks who are retweeting all the time and, and not really ever adding their own thought, their own opinion. I like it, I hate it. You know, it's great, it's great to retweet, but, or, or in any medium to, to repeat what other people have said and give them credit for it. But if you're going to go through and do that, add some value to it. You know, make sure you, uh, you express your own opinion. Because the way you're going to be able to stand out in this massive crowd, because, I mean, you look at the numbers of people engaging online, and, and those numbers grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. What I'm going to say here, and I intentionally had left it off my slide deck, but I had a recent experience that makes me want to uh, add this, um, almost as its own rule. Always be honest online and always be upfront about who you are and what you, who you are representing. Because when you're yourself, then it gives you an opportunity to shine if you're in a batch of people who are just going, you know, hey, you know, I'm in the middle of this social media game, come help me out, or, you know, I'm trying to, to share additional information. So, rule number one was be real. Pretty straightforward. We are who we are. Not too much work there. It's just letting that shine through. Rule number two for me is, is address the need. Everybody is online for some reason. There's always too much information. Not always clear where you need to go to, uh, to get what you need. People want guidance. They want direction. Sometimes the signs are just not clear. It's just not, you know, easy to understand what they need. Sometimes people feel isolated. I mean, you've got so many people out there who are, are looking for friendship. They're looking to connect with somebody. Uh, and they want, you know, guidance. They want uh, someone to help them out. You've got folks who think the challenge is just too great. They need a supporter. They need someone to, they need to feel like somebody's backing them up. You know, you've got people out there constantly shouting for help. You know, shouting for, for something. Um, sometimes they're just terribly frustrated and, and they really do need someone to help kind of smooth it over and, and get them moving in the right direction. We need to be listening and always listening. And we need to be engaging. This example is from Seismic and their Twitter stream. You know, they're there and they're interacting with everyone who's talking about it. And if you look, this is, you know, yet another screen of it. They're keeping that conversation going. You know, you have to make sure that, that you keep it up, that you sustain it. Oops, sorry. Thought I hit. Next. So, you know, folks are out there, and, and sometimes they just need to explore. They need to understand, and, and we can be there to help them do that. And, and honestly, sometimes folks just need to feel validated. Sometimes you just gotta say it's okay, you know? And we're there. We can help.
help them do that. So be real, address the need, and sometimes it's difficult to understand what that need is. Just because somebody is commenting on a blog, posting on a blog, on Twitter, and saying, I'm having this problem, I really need this. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the underlying problem. And sometimes it's that conversation that helps you, you know, probe and understand and, and get to what you need. And then rule number three. So rule number three for me is be the gatekeeper. And now I don't mean in like the Ghostbusters fashion. Um, essentially I'm saying don't be a roadblock. The buck does not stop here. You should never be the end of the line. Especially if you've got a whole company behind you. If you're the end of the line, all you're doing is adding to all the road, roadblocks that are, are already out there. I mean, there are roadblocks in, in every aspect of life. You know, it's difficult to get things done. I'm having trouble with my phone service. I'm having trouble with this. There's always a hurdle you have to get through to get to the next step to get someone to help you. <laughs> Excuse me, when you're working with community online, it's a great opportunity for you to, to remove a lot of those impediments. And sometimes the directions are just confusing. I mean, they may all be there, and it may make perfect sense to us, but it's not necessarily going to make sense to the, to the customer or to the visitor. And, and you know, back to, to Heidi's point, there, there's always so much information. There's always so much available to us. Sometimes, you know, we need to be that little helper helping people sift through it and get to what's relevant. Because if, if I have a problem, I'm going to turn to the technology I feel most comfortable with. I'm going to turn to the community or the environment that's the best place for me to be. That doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, as the social media guy or the community person for this company, you were automatically thinking of being there. So you, your net has to go far and wide, and you have to be the gatekeeper for the company. And sometimes, um, it totally makes sense to us, but when you look at it more closely with, you know, fresh eyes, or if you're really not familiar with the technology, the space, the lingo, it, it may make absolutely no sense at all, or it may just be too much, too fast, and, and there's no clear path to get through it. So we need to be, <coughs> excuse me, so we need to be the ones giving customers the clear path. If we want to lead the customers to, you know, the land of milk and honey, the, you know, the, the land of sunshine, unicorns, and rainbows, we need to take advantage of everything that we've got behind us. If, you, if you've already got a support team, don't become a new support team. Be the funnel. Be the, the gatekeeper that helps to, to get people to the right place. Whether that's talking to the right sales rep, whether that's talking to, you know, the support team, or whether that's following up with one of those groups to help make sure that, you know, whatever was reported, whatever they're having trouble with, whatever they need, is getting addressed. Love the land of milk and honey. And remember, being there is not enough. Just because you put your sign out there, you've got your Twitter handle, you've got your blog, th that doesn't end it. That actually is, is the very beginning step. So, you know, you may have, I love this picture, you may have this open sign, but unless you're there and unless you're engaged, you can't be the gatekeeper. You can't be an active participant in the community. So it's up to you to keep the gates open. And then my final point, and I'm, I know I'm going through this kind of fast, is communication has to go both ways. You are not there just to broadcast your message out there. Otherwise, we'd call it broadcast media. It's social media because of the conversation. And that means when you're in that role with community, you also have to be there to help funnel that information back to the right people in the company. People don't like something about the, about the product. You, you need to be the one who not only gets it back to the product team or the design team, but the one who lets the world know. And that could be you know, a simple tweet. It could be a blog post about, you know, here's recent customer feedback and here's what we've done with it. That kind of thing. You, you need to kind of complete that circle so communication happens. And customers feel that they're contributing to the process. They feel, you know, a stronger vested interest in the outcome. And, and you're also getting great feedback that people used to have to pay for expensive focus groups to do. And I know I went through it kind of quick, but that was really what I wanted to cover. <laughs> so the three rules, be real, address the need, and be the gatekeeper. You should never be the roadblock.